This is the Automation World Get Your Questions Answered podcast, where we connect with industry experts to get the answers you need about industrial automation technologies. This podcast series is sponsored by Allied Electronics and Automation, carrying the most automation and control brand names in North America. The questions posed in this podcast series all come from automation technology users like yourself across the process and discrete manufacturing industries. I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content for Automation World, and the question we'll be exploring in this episode is, how often should you upgrade industrial networks? Now, the practice of upgrading industrial networks has typically been somewhat of a piecemeal process with one line or area of a plant getting an upgrade, often to accommodate a requirement of new automation technologies, while other areas tend to await a similar upgrade a process that can often take years. But as newer automation devices of all types require modern networking technologies to perform as designed, and as plant floor machine data is increasingly required as part of Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 projects, the push for industrial network modernization becomes more critical to business success. So considering these developing realities, it's clear that the older process of upgrading segments only as needed is somewhat fading away in response to a need for broader, more regular updates of industrial networking technology. But how do you plan and prepare for this? So to learn more about it, we have Dan Schaefer of Phoenix Contact joining us. And Phoenix Contact is a supplier of multiple automation-related technologies, ranging from connectors and cables to HMIs and PLCs to sensors, power supplies, and industrial communications. So... Dan, as I was mentioning, we, we know that historically, you know, once industrial networks are in place, that they don't tend to get changed all that often. But what's been the typical upgrade rate for industrial networks as you've seen it? Uh, thanks, David. And first, let me say thank you for uh, Automation World for hosting this and also for our friends at Allied for uh, sponsoring it. Um, so the question about the, the upgrade rate for industrial network, it does, of course, vary due to the nature of the work and the amount of capital investment, um, oftentimes there's a lot of specialized functions, it seems like it's been maybe on the low end every five years, but generally more like 10 or sometimes even 20 years for certain networks to get upgraded uh, or refreshed. I've seen a, a number of instances where Windows 2000 is still there, even some Windows 3.11, and even a couple of instances where MS-DOS is still out there, and that's at least probably 27, 28 years, maybe even a little bit longer. In the, uh, in the IT space, which is where I spent the early part of my career, the standard for, for a full re refresh is about every three to five years, which was basically in line with major technology enhancements, new product lines, and also changes in the paradigms about how things are done. So for example, when there was the rise of uh, storage area networks or network attached storage, SANs and NASs, this caused the IT world to really rethink connectivity in the data center beyond just standard routers and switches. And most of that then got caught up in that next three, four year cycle where everyone was able to take advantage of that technology as it matured and developed. So Dan, I noticed in your response there, you mentioned about how, of course, uh, the practice around upgrading industrial networks can vary a good bit. But have you seen in your experience, does it tend to vary any among verticals? And by that I mean, you know, do certain discrete industries upgrade more or less often than process industries or vice versa? Sure. There, there's definitely uh, a, a pretty wide variation among a lot of the different verticals. So um, I think water, wastewater, and electric power had and, and probably continue to have the longest upgrade cycles where, where 20 years is not uncommon. Uh, the root cause, I guess, would be that both of them require a lot of engineering, very specialized engineering in their design. Um, both are very critical and adhere to the law of NTARs, never touch a running system, mm -hmm. which is one of the big reasons we don't see industrial networks get upgraded in that same IT three, four, five year cycle. Um, in the case of water wastewater, there's always the, the very onerous budget constraint where they don't necessarily have quite as much money. Uh, if you look on the other side of the spectrum, oil and gas has been much better at refreshing their network technology, especially as of late. Uh, a lot of that is driven by the fact that as a more privatized industry, 
and, and an industry that has done very well lately in the profit and revenue department, they've actually been able to invest more aggressively in upgrade, upgrading their network infrastructure. Um, this desire, and, and really it's, it's more of a need than a desire, it's also driven by the fact that they embrace a much more data-centric model. So they, they really get a lot of value out of real-time operational data, what's going on in the well, what's going on in their process, that they need that data. And to get access to that data, they need to upgrade more frequently. They need to take advantage of, of new gateways that are coming out. The emergence of different protocols like MQTT, the cloud itself. Um, the other side of the oil and gas uh, short cycle is the fact that they've seen uh, a lot of crippling effects of cybersecurity breaches and attacks. For example, uh, Saudi Aramco, which pushed them to address cybersecurity a lot more eagerly and proactively than, than some other areas. Um, so they've had a lot of upgrades in the last four, five, six years. Price of oil has gone up and their coffers have allowed them to do that more frequently. On the uh, discrete manufacturing side, I think the automakers um, are probably leading the charge. And a lot of that is because they've been uh, keen to embed IT folks or former IT folks within their operational ranks. That is to say, a lot of the people making decisions and, and running the OT networks in automotive plants have an IT background. And because of that, they, they sort of have that three, four, five year mentality burned into them. And because of that, they've really reaped a lot of rewards and they've been able to take advantage of a lot of the new features and functions that the latest and greatest round of network technology has brought about. All right. Interesting. Thanks, Dan. So in, in looking back on these uh, various upgrades uh, that you're familiar with or been involved with, what components of an industrial network were typically changed during these upgrades? Dave, yeah, a lot of times it, it varies a little bit, but certainly the most fundamental pieces are always being updated. And when I say fundamental, I'm, I'm thinking network switches, whether they're managed or unmanaged, firewalls, VPN appliances, routers, uh, wireless LANs, WLAN, or, or maybe Bluetooth equipment that's out there, the so new access points or, or adapters. Um, the way I often think about it is anything with code is, is typically being changed during these, uh, these periods of updates and upgrades. Um, some of the more optional things would be PCs or user workstations, especially if they're not being actively patched, protected, and modded. It, it does cost extra money, but you definitely make up for that in terms of time saved, uh, assurance, and network resiliency. So beyond those technology aspects and specific devices uh, that you were discussing, what are the business advantage and operational advantages of uh, updating your network? So there are definitely a few big advantages to doing an, an upgrade or an update of your infrastructure. And, and many of those have nothing to do with new features or shiny new hardware. I think first and foremost, uh, one of the ancillary benefits is that it provides the perfect excuse to update, validate, and clean up your documentation. Too many times I've gone into plants or factories and you start asking simple con questions about what's connected to, to this switch or where does this PLC terminate at? And the documentation is, is out of date. They don't know the answer. And that becomes very difficult to, to manage, not only from an operational standpoint, but also from a cybersecurity standpoint. If you don't know who's able to talk to what, you, you're basically asking for trouble. So documentation and updating that, cleaning that up is a huge extra advantage, whether it's as simple as just entering and verifying equipment, the, the model and the serial number, in an Excel spreadsheet or something a bit more comprehensive, um, this has a lot of value and will save a ton of headache down the road. Um, cleaning up old VLANs is something that uh, I'm a big fan of. Again, it's just a little bit of, of network hygiene. Cleaning up old mirror ports or installing mirror ports or network taps. Um, all of these things are, are things that should be done as regular network hygiene, but they also seem to get put on the back burner uh, or become victims of the, I'm too busy with a project now, I'll get to it next month, and next month never seems to come. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'll just kind of follow that up with, I'm, I'm a very big believer in know your network. Uh, it's one of the things that I preach when I give uh, seminars on this. 
you know, when you do an, an, an update, it gives you the perfect reason and the perfect opportunity to get in there and, and reacquaint yourself with the infrastructure that makes your factory or your plant tick. So take this as not just a, an opportunity to get new technology and new shiny bells and whistles and new features, but also to really do some of that, uh, some of that grunt work, some of that process validation work, and some of that documentation that really makes makes your life a lot easier in the long run. So, with with all that's happening around uh, projects around the Internet of Things, Industry 4.0, and as well as the growing use of cloud and edge computing generally. I have to think that the historical approach uh, that manufacturers of all types have used to network upgrades is is going to be changing radically. Uh, what are you seeing in your work with industrial co- customers? Is that playing out or are they still kind of doing what they've always done historically? Is it having much an effect yet? Well, yes and no. So I would actually say that we're seeing radical similarities in the approach today uh, in our in our IIoT space, when compared to some of the uh, old school legacy network installations that are that are still out there or, or being up, upgraded slowly but surely, when you're looking deeper in the network um, at what in IT terms we would call the access layer of the network, where things are connected, where end devices are actually connected in a cabinet, in a switch port, or or connected to a firewall, there's still a lot of basic connectivity happening there. So, so down there in that part of the network, when you're thinking of basic unmanned switches, um, there isn't necessarily a, a big change in, in the mindset or the paradigm of how things are being upgraded or what's being upgraded. Um, so there's a lot of similarities there when you get down to the very low end of the network. Sort of in the middle where you see maybe more managed switches, uh, some WLAN or Bluetooth, some routers or, or Firewalls that are segmenting networks that are uh, doing a little bit of separation. You're going to see um, that the upgrades are happening at a quicker pace. So again, especially in those verticals that I mentioned, like the automotives and oil and gas, they're happening at a quicker pace because the pace of technology and the pace of innovation keeps getting faster. So if you want to take advantage of the latest wireless technology, so 802.11b gives way to 802.11g, which gives way to 802.11n. Now, you, if you want to take advantage of those faster speeds and those additional features, you need to um, increase your update and your upgrade cycle. And that's going to keep continuing because the pace of innovation is just going faster and faster and faster. You didn't even hear things like Edge Gateway or MQTT or Node-RED um, as recently as two or three years ago. Now, those buzzwords are all the rage, and people are seeing real dollar benefits to doing that that update. So the closer you are um, to the high end of the network, where OT and IT converge, and on the edge where data is going to the to the fog or to the cloud, that's where you really see a change in the mindset the last couple of years. The evolution of the new features are, are really driving that. But lower in the network, it's still a lot of, of business as usual. Okay. So whenever you talk about networks, and especially in light of the industrial internet of things, as we've been discussing here, you can't avoid mention of security issues. So as a manufacturer starts planning to upgrade their network, what are the prime cybersecurity issues they should be sure to address as part of their network upgrade? Well, the first step is just what you said as part of the question. It's thinking about cybersecurity. It's it's having that consideration and deciding we're going to address cybersecurity. We're not going to sweep it under the rug. So taking the time and making the effort to consider it, to plan for it, to sit down and actually spend some time designing it in, that's huge versus what's happened in the past and uh, and, and what we see in some of the legacy networks where if there is any cybersecurity at, at all, it's bolting on a firewall or, it, you know, Putting something in ad hoc, last minute, because you need to, because you got attacked or because you had an issue, maybe it was something that wasn't even malicious, and you end up trying to to sort of shove a a round peg through a square hole. So considering cybersecurity and designing it in at the onset of an upgrade cycle is absolutely huge. In terms of practical best practices, 
Uh, I'll focus on three, and, and none of these are, are all about the technology because the technology is going to keep evolving. It's going to keep changing. But if you focus on three mindsets or three paradigms, you'll they're timeless. They're ageless. They'll make you more secure no matter what the next whiz bag day is. So the first one of those is the principle of least privilege, or also known as the principle of least authority, which essentially means that a device or a user should really only be able to communicate with what it needs to. That means it shouldn't have some blanket allow all firewall rule in there. You shouldn't give a bunch of people admin rights because it's just more convenient or easier to do. You do what you need, you give access to what is needed and nothing more. If a PLC is talking to uh, an HMI and that PLC is talking Modbus to that HMI and you have a firewall in the middle, your firewall rules should allow just the IP address of the PLC, talk just to, P, to the IP address of the HMI, and only on Modbus. Not some blanket, let the PLC talk to all or let the PLC be talked to by all. Least authority, least privilege that is needed to get the job done. The second principle is defense in depth. This is not anything new to the IT or the OT space. Uh, it's, it's been very common in all sorts of applications from the military to technology. It just means that you want to layer your defenses, ideally with some different and various techniques and technologies. Having one big firewall and no defenses behind it, no security behind it, isn't really ideal. Uh, think of an example where somebody uh, comes into the plant with an infected USB stick, where they were traveling and their laptop got infected when they were at a, a hotel. If they plug that laptop in behind that big monolithic firewall, you're in a world of hurt because there's nothing behind it, behind that firewall to protect it. There's no segmentation, there's no layering, there's no cell level firewalling or protecting, there's no alarming or alerting. So defense in depth is absolutely key as a cybersecurity principle. And it's so much easier to do that in the design stage than it is after you've already started installed. And then the third uh, principle is to know your network. I mentioned that a couple of questions ago. Again, I'm a really big believer in this. Logging, auditing, monitoring, doing baseline, understanding what your network should look like during normal operations is huge when you have an anomaly. It's huge when you have a problem. It's huge when something goes wrong. You always have something that you can go back to and say, Ah, normally my network is seeing seven megabits per second, and these are the devices, the IP addresses or the MAC addresses that are talking. If all of a sudden you see that spike to 27 megabits per second, you can be pretty sure that something's going on and you can identify who all of a sudden is generating all that extra traffic. So you can't always prevent an infection or, or, or accidental malfunction or even an honest mistake, but you can make it so that you're quickly aware of it and know what's going on, and that makes it all the easier. Those are all solid points. Thanks, Dan. So in light of all these changes and issues we've discussed, you know, how would you ultimately answer the reader question that's uh, at the, at the core of uh, this podcast episode in that, you know, how often should you upgrade industrial networks? So I'll preface this by saying, of course, your mileage may vary and everyone has their own set of extenuating circumstances and the own, their own amount of resources, whether time or money. But me, I'm patching at least once a year, ideally once a quarter. So I'm making sure everything is up to date. I'm seeing if I have anything that that has gotten an update that maybe closes a cybersecurity hole or a vulnerability. And I'm looking to do a full technology refresh every five to seven years. A little bit longer than the IT space, um, but unless you're in a super static environment where everything is working perfectly and you or your users don't have any must-haves or, or needs or even want that aren't being addressed, I think you really need to find it in your budget and your planning to do it every five to seven years. If you can afford to do it more often, so much the better. All right. Well, those are some great insights. So thank you for joining me for this uh, podcast, Dan. And thanks to all of our listeners for joining us. And please keep watching this space for more installments of Automation World Get Your Questions Answered. And remember to visit our website at www.automationworld.com to stay on top of the latest industrial automation technology insights, trends, and news. <music> <music>